Hello artists, we're now going to combine our pen tool skills with our shape building skills by practicing on this detail shot of a Helen Frankenthaler painting. The biggest shape I see in the composition is the large green shape on the right side, so I'm going to start with the pen tool on that one. Start outside the composition and then work your way in. Your line should be fluid and curving following the perimeter of the shape. Remember you can alternate stroke and fill in order to see your pen line better. I want you zoomed in but not too much. I don't want you to um, work with an obsessive amount of anchors like this. This is not the way I want you to be drawing this. Instead I want you to work uh, using fluid curves as you learned in the Bezier game. There are moments of ambiguity along the shape where you may have to decide whether I could go around this way and call that part of the shape, or I could cut in and work my way in and back out along the shape. Uh, there's going to be room for you to interpret it artistically. Okay, once I've finished the perimeter of the shape, and hit the edge of the composition. I want to stop my pen tool line and I can just push escape twice or I can switch to the selection tool and click away. So I should have two little tails of, on my stroke. I've got the one moving off on this side and I've got the one moving off on this side. Now I'm going to use my shape building skills to complete this shape. I need this vertical line and I need this horizontal line so I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle around the whole composition, around the whole artboard. Then I'm going to use the selection tool. By holding shift, uh, I'm now selecting both the rectangle I just drew and this large green shape. I'll use the shape builder tool now, shift M, and click on my green shape. We can see what's happening here in the layers menu. We now have the number of objects populating in this layer. I'm going to click on my green shape. It may be, uh, it may take you a little clicking in order to locate it. See how this is actually selecting this area, but I don't want that. I want my green shape. I'm going to click on the edge over here. I'll use the eyedropper tool. And now I've filled my shape with a solid green. I can then get rid of everything that's not that green shape. I can get rid of this anchor and line. I can get rid of this anchor and line. I can see in here now, I'm trying to clean up my layer. I don't know what this is. Let me locate that thing. Okay, this is an extra tiny little stroke or anchor that's been created in the shape building process. This is why it's always important to go through and clean up your layers as you work. So get rid of this little stray mark also. I'm just clicking to the right of each object in the layers menu so that it highlights it with a little square and then I'm pushing delete on my keypad. Okay, the only thing I have left now in this layer is this green shape, which I want, and I have uh, this excess that I trimmed away with the Shape Builder tool. I'm going to keep this excess shape because, um, for example, when I go to draw this pink shape, I'm going to need this vertical line, this horizontal line, and this vertical line for building that shape, so I might as well just keep it. I can delete it and draw it again if that makes you happier, uh, but let's go ahead and keep it. It's uh, a little simpler. Okay, let me draw the pink shape and show you what's happening next. Pen tool P, coming around and working now on the profile, the outline of the pink shape. Anytime a shape meets another shape, so I see how this pink kind of comes and hits this anchor, I'm going to run it in and make sure I've got a really clear overlap moment. Uh, if I clicked here and accidentally didn't quite get them to touch and I didn't realize it, I'll have some shape building problems later. So I like having a little excess that runs into the shape, and I'll just cut this off later. It's not a problem. All right, I'll push escape to get off the pin tool. I'm calling this pink shape for now. I might come back and pull out some more green out of it later, but uh, let's see. I think next I'm considering this as continuing my pink shape. 
Once again, there's moments of ambiguity in here where I'm having to make decisions about what goes where. I'm going to draw the edge of the pink shape even though uh, it's now being influenced by these red and yellow marks. Okay, I'm going to call that my pink shape. So now I have this edge drawn here with excess running uh, inside the green shape and excess running to the left side of the composition. And I've got this other stroke here with excess running out. And I come around and then I run out again. Okay, so now I'm going to build a shape. And what I need is this pink shape to be built. So I need to click on every shape and every line that uh, runs along the outside of this pink shape. So I need that large leftover bit that we had from the green shape we built a minute ago. I'm going to click on that. I need the stroke I just drew from my pen tool. Let me select that. I need the other stroke I just drew with my pen tool. And it looks like now every bit of the pink shape is highlighted. So we should be good. So now I will jump to the Shape Builder tool and I'll click on this shape out here. And look how many new things populated in the Layers menu. Okay, I want the pink shape to be colored pink so I can see it better. I've now clicked on the perimeter of it. I click I for the eyedropper tool and now I click on the pink area to pull out a color with the eyedropper. And now I am uh, deleting stuff. I don't need that. I don't need this one. I don't need this. And I don't need this. What am I left with? I've got my green shape in this layer. I've got my pink shape in this layer. I've got uh, the rest of the background trimmings that I can continue to use for this white shape, the edges of it, and the blue. And I have, oh, this little guy. This is kind of a convenient accident, but this is what's left over when I'm drawing the perimeter of the shape. So I guess there's this pale green shape back here that I could call uh, my next shape I want to draw. And then I'll probably go back and draw the red and yellow on top. Uh, so I'm just going to keep this shape. I don't need to get rid of it. And I'm going to make this this kind of pale green. There we are. And it's coming together. At any time you want, you can turn on your background color, and that can help you see how far along you are in your composition. You can also switch to wireframe mode, command Y to check the cleanliness of your composition. I wouldn't want to see any redundant lines, any like slivers between shapes. There should be no gaps or overlaps. It should all be very, very clean. That's command Y, uh, wireframe mode. Okay, I'm going to turn the background back off so I can see again. And what I have now is three completed shapes. I've got this area I still need to work on. I do want that red and yellow shape back uh, because they seem really important to the composition. I'm going to click on my shapes layer and make sure I'm operating in there. And I need to get behind this pale green shape now in order to see the red and yellow again. What I want to do is click on it and then I want to invert stroke and fill. Right now it has a pale green fill with no stroke, transparent. Uh, if I invert it, the pale green will move to the outside of the shape and uh, the fill will become transparent. So I'll be able to see behind the shape without losing that pale green color that I've already attributed to that shape. Uh, so if I uh, invert, I can now see and I haven't lost it. See, I can just bring it back, back and forth like that. Uh, you can also do that with Shift X. Okay. All right, so I want to be able to see. I'll get my pen tool out. I'll start outside the shape. I'm doing the red one. Just as I started outside the composition with the green shape and the pink shapes. And I'm working my way around this red shape. And it looks like I can meet that anchor, but anytime I'm doing a clean meet like that, I'm also going to give myself a little excess just to make sure that it uh, runs all the way to that line. Okay, so I now should have what I need for the red shape. 
uh, I'm going to click on the pale green shape. I'm going to click on the stroke that I just made, and now I'm going to open the Shape Builder tool. I can click on the red shape to create it. There we are. And then I can get rid of this excess and this excess. And now I want to select my red shape and turn it red. Eyedropper tool, click on a nice red area. And now watch if we go back and invert the stroke and fill of our pale green, Shift X. So now that red is on top. I can go ahead and do the yellow one also. Shift X, pen tool. I'm going to start inside of the, an adjacent shape. So anytime there is a shared edge, so I'm trying to draw the yellow one, do not redraw a line on top of an existing line. Always try to um, abut the new shape to the other. So I'm not going to try to draw this yellow shape and then try to draw along this line. Do not do that because what that does is it creates these nasty little slivers and mishaps between shapes. We do not want that. Okay. Instead, I'm going to start with the pen tool. I'm going to start inside of the red shape and work my way out of it and come round and then I'm going to go into there. So that I'm going to call that the edge of the yellow one. I'm going to get off the pen tool so I can start a fresh line. And I'm going to come over here and begin drawing this area of the yellow shape and run it all the way in. Okay, so now I can click on my pale green shape, which has the top and bottom edge of my yellow shape. The left stroke and the right stroke. I had to hold shift while I was selecting each one of those. And now shape builder tool, shift M. I'll click on the yellow shape and that created it. I've now got some cleaning up to do. I can see for sure up in this menu. I can either locate each little thing over here within the artboard or I can just click in the menu of stuff I know I need to get rid of. I can click on that one, delete, click on this one, delete, delete, delete. Uh, that's my red shape. I need that. This is an old pale green shape now. It's that part and this part. I might go ahead and I don't want those to exist as two separate things, so I'm going to group those together. I'm going to go to Properties and push Group. So now anytime I move one, it would move the other. Anytime I uh, recolor one, it would recolor both of them. These are now in my composition working just as a single shape. I don't want to consider those two different parts. Okay, and now I need the yellow shape. If I was having trouble clicking on it, if I couldn't find a way to click on that yellow shape, it's like, oh, I need the yellow shape. No, that's the green one. I need the yellow shape. No, that's the green one. Um, there's a couple things you could do. You could click and drag select, and then hold shift and click on the thing you don't want to be clicked on, and that'll leave you with the shape that you wanted. Let me show you that one more time. If, if you're having trouble clicking on the thing you're trying to click on, I want, I want this yellow shape. You can click and drag a selection to select multiple things, and then start deselecting the stuff you don't want and that gives me that one. Or you could just locate that shape up in the layers menu. You can click around in your layers until the yellow shape is highlighted. There it is. I'll use the eyedropper tool I and click on the yellow area. Now I have my composition coming together. I'm going to turn on my background again to kind of see the whole thing working together. All right, now I'm going to do the white cloud. Pen tool, start outside the composition and work my way in. That fill is irritating me. I'm going to switch uh, fill and stroke so that the stroke has color now and the fill doesn't. Remember, we are not, not, not drawing like this. We're not so incredibly zoomed in that we're doing obsessive detail. Your file will explode if you put that many anchors in uh, your artwork. Learning the Bezier curves is all about an economy and a fluidity to your lines. So I want you to utilize that. There's some ambiguity here again where I have to make decisions about where the cloud starts and stops. Sometimes it's clear, sometimes it's unclear. Okay, I run out 
So I've run outside the composition, drawn my stroke all the way around, and then I've run it into a shape that I want the cloud to meet with because I want the cloud to share this line right here with the green shape. I need a vertical line here and a horizontal line here in order to close off the white cloud, but I already have them. That excess uh, rectangle we made at the very beginning of our drawing process is still coming through for us. So I've got that, and I'm going to click on the stroke I just made. Use the Shape Builder, Shift-M, click on the cloud, and I'm going to start cleaning. I can click on the stuff that I visibly know shouldn't be there. I can check my menu, make sure I've got only the things that I need, and here's my cloud. I've got the cloud. I'm going to click I for the eyedropper tool, and then I can turn my background back on just to see how far along I am, and this composition is coming together. I'm really looking in this exercise for about 10 to 12 major shapes. Uh, right now I would say I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ish. I think about three or four nice moments of significant detail. So um, probably this kind of bleed stain would be my next shape that I want. I'm going to add that sort of turquoise ish. Uh, bleed and then I have room for a few more details because I haven't hit my 10 to 12 shape mark so I could go into any of these larger shapes and start pulling out details so let's say I finish off this bleed first got my stroke selected got my parameters selected uh, looks like that's all the things I need selected in order to draw this one. Shift M. Click on that shape I just made. Give it this turquoisey color. I'm not going to create a shape here because this is my background color and I can just turn it on in order to fill that area in. Okay, so now I would say I have every major shape. I can afford a few minor shapes now. Let me check the cloud for some shapes. Oops, got to turn off the background in order to see my source photo. Okay, there's some little flecks of white here that might be really interesting to add if I wanted to do that as a source of detail. Uh, this shape that I'm turning on and off with Shift X, I could bring out this highlight. I could bring out this darker area. Let me check the green one. Green one doesn't have much variation to it. Um, probably leave that one as it is. Let me check the pink. The pink has some streaks and things. It could be nice to do two different values of pink. I've got this lighter brush stroke here and then kind of a darker brush stroke behind it. Maybe that's a detail I want to bring out. So what you're looking for is to arrive at about 10 to 12 shapes. You're not obsessing over the tiniest little details. You're still making a fluid, elegant illustration of this Helen Frankenthaler painting. Um, I don't want to see that rapid click anchor creation. I don't want to see you in here um, Oh, just drawing every single little streak and every single little fleck of paint. There's going to be a moment later on for you to do more detailed artworks. I think your time spent in this exercise is really about combining and applying your pen tool knowledge with your shape building knowledge.